Hey there, uh, Dr. Trent Corey, physical therapist. Just want to go over uh, plantar fasciitis issues that I see and exercises that you can do to help it. So uh, the basic thing that I really see with a lot of people with plantar fasciitis is that, I don't know if you can see this, but your toes spring up too much. They go way up too far towards here. And then the muscles on the here, the tendons on the top of the foot get really tight. So the, from the top of your toes all the way here get really tight. So all the tissue here pulls up and then that creates more pull on the bottom of the, of the tissue on the bottom of the foot, which creates more pull. Usually people are pain right in the heel, right, like right here where all those tissues attach. There's four layers of muscle and a bunch of fascia that attach into there. So uh, what's important is that we try to help re restore the balance of those muscles tight on the top and help slacken this tissue on the bottom. So. And the first things I have people do is actually pull their toes down and just kind of work in here. And you could cross your leg like I am and just kind of cross it. You see that okay? Yeah, just kind of pull it through here. And you can hold that as a stretch. And it's pretty intense for certain parts, so you don't want to go too hard. So I'm kind of showing as an example, but you don't have to really show too hard. As long as you just feel a stretch on the top, shouldn't be any bit of pain on the bottom, but it should help actually uh, take some pressure off those spots. So. A lot of times when the pain is in one area, it's usually not the cause of it. It's usually somewhere else. So this is a big example of that where we need to work on the top of the foot and stretch that out. Um, and another thing you can do, and what you do is just put your foot here like this and then pull those toes down like that. And then you can also go back a little further, get the whole top of the foot, whole top of the foot into the shin. You can rotate in and rotate out. Just get some stretch in those tissues because often they're really, really tight. Uh, shoes are designed where the toes go way up and and that causes a lot of strain there So that's one thing to do another thing to do and especially with first thing in the morning When we fall asleep our toes kind of point down and so this tissue in the back the calf get re gets really tight So some people wear a night splint, you know, it gets that foot to come here like that and that can stretch it during the night It can alleviate some of that issue, but it's usually not a major cure for it, but it does help uh, but one thing you can do is once you get up in the morning, all this tissue is tight, you can get a ball and you can kind of find whatever you have around. So I just find whatever I have around. I have a baseball, I have a little golf ball, uh, lacrosse ball. What you want to do is kind of roll that out in the morning. Just get that loosened up, kind of find the inner arch by the toes, kind of under here and over here. Now I had a client today. What you gotta watch out for is not rolling straight over the heel, especially if you have pain in that spot. You don't wanna pull, go right over the painful spots. It's really uncomfortable, it's not gonna be helpful. Um, another thing you can work on is work on gripping the ball, which is a little more challenging, but you could try it. Um, I walk barefoot a lot, so I got a lot of lower dexterity, but you can practice that. Um, main thing though is for people to just get that mobility going that tissue, so that's really helpful. Um, any different size balls will kind of create different pressure points. So I got a point right there underneath my big toe. I can find a little more direct with the bit, with a little smaller ball. So it's really helpful. Um, you can do the same thing with um, getting the calf with the tennis ball, or you can get a foam roller out. And so you can come here, land the foam roller, and just go like this. So you just kind of go back and forth, kind of find the spot where it's sore. And then if it's kind of tender in the spot, then you can work on pumping your ankle through that range. Or you can go in and out, just kind of get it loosened up. It's really important to get mobility in those calves and just help that loosen up. And so that would be really helpful uh, as you get that going because if you're trying to encourage blood flow to that spot. And if you don't have blood flow to that spot, the body can't really heal so well. So important to get all that loosened up. And that will help you get moving first thing in the morning. You may want to just give yourself a little self-massage in the calf and the, and the shins. And then also um, wringing out your foot. So, you know, if I told about pointing down, you can also just kind of back and forth and just kind of spend about um, 30 seconds to a minute or so each morning. It will help you to get moving a lot better. Okay. Um, after you loosen up, another great thing to do throughout your day is to get more length in the gastroc and the soleus. There's two different muscle groups that are in the lower calf and the calf. We're going to stretch them both. So what we do is find an, a wall, and very simply, um, kind of go to the wall. I mean, I, I'll show you like this against here. You don't have to push hard against something. But what you want to make sure is that your foot points back. And I hope you can see that my knee is, my back knee is straight and pointing straight towards the wall. And then I lean into the wall and hold that position. You just get a nice stretch there. Okay. Hold that for 
at least probably 30 seconds to at least a minute or more. I, I like people to say go for a minute if it feels fine and then go longer if you can, um, up to two minutes or even longer. Um, some research is saying even three to five minutes would be a good amount of time. Okay, so that's with knee straight. Another one I'll show you from the side because I don't know how well you saw that there, but you could also do um, the soleus, which is, you know, knee, this is knee straight. You also do knee bent. So make sure that toe is pointed straight ahead. Bend that knee and then keep that heel down. You want to see that heel come up. You want to hold it like this. Bend and then hold that stretch like that. It should feel stretched lower down, like right in here. But it's important for all that tissue to get mobile and that will help your all this length to get a little bit better along the whole back here. So you're not creating a tender spot right in that spot where the where the tissues are pulling too hard. Okay, so those are those are pretty much the primary ones to work on right now. Uh, there are some other stretches that we could be done and there's a bunch of things that we need to do in terms of footwear. Um, I brought in my correct toes just as an example. You know, these are toe spreaders that you can kind of put between your toes. And a lot of feet are shaped like the shoes that they wear and they come to a point. And what this helps is to distribute that load. And that's what's happening on the bottom of the foot. There's usually some sort of point that's getting too much pressure on an area. So we need to make sure we kind of splay that out. Um, this is an ad ad adaptative thing that takes um, months to years often for people to get a shift and change. And it's taken me many years to get the shift. But um, I've had many clients as well who have uh, went to the correct toes and also went to a shoe like the Ultra. And these are my shoes um, that have a wider toe box. And that splays out the foot and gives a lot more room for, it to, for your foot to, to move the way it naturally should. And that allows for less strain in the, in the plantar fascia and the tissues in the bottom of the foot. And so that, those are some keys. Um, there's also um, metatarsal pads that usually are put right about this spot in the foot, which also is like um, taking off that pressure. It's putting pressure here to take the pressures off those hot spots. And so all these types of things are really helpful things to improve um, you know, the pain and to help to encourage the healing that's going on when someone has this heel pain and that issue. So um, take a look at these, uh, give me uh, some advice or give me some uh, you know, feedback on how uh, these things have helped you. And um, I wish you the best with your plantar fascia, fascia issues. Thanks.